Hi, five. Today we, we will be reading another story from the Aztec uh, tradition. Um, you can find it here on, on the slides. Okay, so if you can see and follow me on the slides, you can see that um, it's somehow about the sun and the moon. Okay, I'm going to put maybe right this one a little bit smaller so it's a bit clearer, hopefully, for you all. All right, so let's think about, um, you should read this, the story first and then you should pause it and come back to me um, on this video. So I will give you um, a couple of minutes to do that uh, because again, um, there are lots of pictures so it's not a long story and I shall see you in a bit. Okay, so you should have read the story. So what kind of story do you think you have just read? You've just read. Okay, in your book, you can write down what do you think uh, this story is and why, okay? Again, also in this case, you should have to pause for a second to just write down what you think it is and what are the things that are making you think that we are talking about a myth, a legend or a fable. Um, and then come back to me. However, if you're really, really struggling, I suggest you go straight onto the next slide. Okay, so in the next slide, I have included um, all the definitions for legends, for myths, for uh, folk tales, uh, sometimes also fairy tales, and for fables. Okay, so this um, so this uh, slide should help you a bit um, to a bit more to recognize what kind of story we were talking about uh, earlier. What story you have read, and I can tell you it is a myth. Okay, what are myths? So a myth is a story based on a traditional legend, uh, which has a deep symbolic meaning. A myth conveys a truth to those who tell it and hear it, rather than necessarily recording a true event. Okay, it's just telling you something about the reality, but it's not really something that happened uh, for real. So although some myths can be um, accounts of actual events, they have become transformed by symbolic meaning and shift or shifted in time or place. So we know that things sometimes get to be changed. And obviously, uh, you need to think that this kind of story used to be passed on mouth by mouth. You know, it was a storytelling kind of tradition rather than something written down. OK, so things change. Myths are, uh, this is what I have highlighted, myths are often used to explain universal and local beginnings and involve supernatural beings. And obviously there, in this story, we have seen many of the Aztec gods. The great power of the meaning of these stories to the culture in which they developed is a major reason, reason why they survive as long as they do, sometimes for thousands of years. OK, so because it's so linked to the culture and to their beliefs, they are they're always told and they're um, often something that people believe in, even after many, many, many years. All right. So your task today. So um, you need to create your own storyboard from the myth, from for the myth rather not from sorry for the myth. Um, that you have just read um, and obviously you, it needs to be linked to the myths itself so it's not writing another myth okay so the storyboard is going to be about that myth please do not write another one however obviously you shouldn't really be copying it because again we have everything here so you will have to rewrite it in your own words, obviously you can make pie um, some maybe of the pictures or some of the words that's been used, but we would like to see a lot of you in the storyboard. I have included a storyboard plan uh, that could help you with obviously the, you know, the layout of the drawings and obviously the wording that you're going to be using the sentences. Now, the challenge for today is actually to come up with words and phrases to describe the handsome God and the ugly God. So you really need to focus on that. Maybe you can use some um, metaphors or similes, for example, try to be as um, descriptive, uh, descriptive as you can. And also, 
looking back at the hand of glory story that we have read last time, well, not last time, a couple of um, weeks ago, um, can you maybe use some of the um, vocabulary that has been used that uh, there um, and include it in this one? Um, if you find something that works, obviously you don't have to put it there if you don't think that it will uh, improve your um, writing. Now, this is the storyboard. So as you know, the storyboard is something that we write before we are going to write a story. And that's because obviously you will have two days where you will write this story as well in paragraphs. So please, if you've got amazing ideas and um, you have an adjective or an expression, something that you want to use, please jot it down in your book because you might need it uh, in the few um, in the following days. Okay, so to recap, what we would like um, from you today is to read this um, story again, and then try and identify what kind of story it was in your own words. Uh, so maybe highlight which part of the story you think is telling you that it's a myth, <laughs> um, as I explained. Now, hopefully you have tried by yourself before uh, listening to me talking. You know, this is the cheeky part of you know, not having a live teaching. <laughs> um, but again, when you write that it's a myth, please maybe um, include a couple of sentences to explain that you know why it's a myth. Okay, maybe one part of the words that has been, um, or the sentences that's been used there, or, you know, your own explanation and something in your own words. Again, there is a bit of help here. So you could maybe make pie something from here and put it in your own words associated with the evidence from the text. Okay. So this, uh, the final task is actually to create your own storyboard. So we'd like to see lovely, beautiful uh, drawings, but uh, together with that, I would like also to see some um, good des descriptive writing and maybe some adjectives just jotted down that you want to use next time when you will be writing the full story, the full myth in uh, proper paragraphs. Okay, um, hopefully you will enjoy this task. And if you need anything, please just uh, send us an email. Uh, sorry, not an email, you know, write a post. There we go. On Tapestry, I'm going to try to get back to you as soon as possible. Bye, your five.